Hi, I'm John, and today we're going to be looking at building forms in Jadu's XFP, or XForms Professional. Uh, XForms Professional is Jadu's enterprise electronic forms tool that's embedded within the Concept Portal product. When we talk about building forms, I think it's easier if we just bake things down to kind of the simplest form. So building forms basically starts with uh, an initial setup, and there's six steps involved in, in creating any form. Uh, the level of degree that you might go into on each of those forms will be different depending on the form, but uh, what I want to do today is walk through creating those forms, what are those six steps, and get you familiar with what that, that might feel like. The initial step of creating a form is basically just hitting create new form, giving the form a title, assigning it a category so that it lives in the appropriate place within the system, and giving it a description. The description will ensure that other users in the system know what the form is used for and potentially maybe what year or what version the form is. From there, you can also decide what audience is going to be able to fill in the form. So is this somebody that uh, only an authenticated student should be filling in the form, for instance? Some other things that you might want to add when you set up the form. And then the next step is adding your questions. Now, we're fortunate that most of the forms you're going to be building already exist today as a piece of paper or a PDF. So you probably already know what questions need to be asked. What we really need to think about is the user experience and how can we better order those questions or maybe put a little bit of logic behind them. So after we've added the questions, the next step is just that. How do we make the form a little bit more intuitive by adding routes, adding logic, adding email notifications, who needs to be notified when the form is submitted, does the user that submitted it need a confirmation email back in their inbox giving them kind of a receipt of the form. And then finally, before anybody can fill in the form, you've got to publish it. So the form has to be live. All of the forms are available in a browser, on a, on a mobile or desktop browser. And in order for a student or faculty or staff to be able to access that form, you have to have made it live. So let's walk through those steps now. If we just go into the system and, and click on a, uh, in the XForms Pro module and say create new form, We'll give this form a title, and we'll call it the Student Transcript Request Form. Next, we're going to assign it categories, and in this case, we're giving it the category of Student Services, which lives uh, kind of where the registrar lives in, inside of our Jadu University. We're also going to give it a brief description in our metadata tab. And as you can see here, those are the only required steps or the required pieces of information for the initial setup. Although there's some other things that you might want to enable, like a progress bar, or uh, if you want users that are not currently signed in to be prompted to sign in before they're able to fill in this form, those are things that you can enable here at the initial setup. So step two of creating a form, after you've done the initial setup and given it a title, is to create a page for your first set of questions. Now you may only have one page of questions on your form, but creating pages will allow you to basically present the most relevant questions to a user based on maybe what they've previously answered in the form. So in this case, we're going to create a new page, and we're going to call that page student information. And the questions that we want to live on this form, on this page, that is, are going to be relevant to the student's request. So we need to know their full name, their email address, uh, a maiden name, if applicable, what school they attended, what degree they earned, basically all the information that is going to allow us to do the research on this student. You can see here if I just click on this school attended, this is a drop down menu and I've just manually created options in here for the student to choose from. Law school, medical school, school of engineering. I can reorder those options. I can set one as a default. I can make this question required and so on and so forth. The settings that you see here are pretty consistent throughout the different types of questions you may be adding. One of the types of questions, in this case a date, or we've labeled this date of request, you'll see that there's a lot of toggle switches that give us access to functionality that's pretty unique to the form builder. So within the date field, I can tell this form to default to the current date, I can only accept dates within a certain range, or only accept dates within the past, and so on. Once we've created the questions on the form, we can use the tools like our in-page branching to conditionally show or hide other questions that might need to live on this page, depending on maybe how I've answered a previous question. So here, we've added a section to our form 
and we've called that section graduation details. Basically what we're trying to find out if the student has already graduated, so this can help us track down their request or do some research on their request. So we've said that we are going to conditionally show the questions in this section if the answer to have you graduated yet is equal to yes. So that creates a holding place for us to add other questions to. And now, anytime the criteria for have you graduated is equal to yes, we will then show the questions that live inside of this section. In this case, we have one question asking what year you graduated. And we're also asking the student optionally to upload a copy of their diploma. And we've let them know in the help text that this is not a required field, but it can help expedite the request. Lastly, we want to know how many official and how many unofficial transcript copies the student wants. This is going to help us tell the student how much they owe for this request. Official copies cost $5 and unofficial copies cost two. So we're able to run some calculations in the background using our logic and tell the student how much they owe. So the next step in creating a form after you've given it a title and some basic setup and given some questions is putting any logic or routes onto that form. Here under our advanced tab, we have the ability to create logic. And in this case, you can see that we have uh, a logic called total cost for official transcripts. And here we have a mathematical uh, calculation that takes the answer to how many official transcripts would you like and multiplies that times $5. That basically creates a placeholder in the system where we can calculate the amount owed for the official transcripts. We've done the same thing for unofficial transcripts. And then we've created a separate logic that takes the total of those two requests and basically comes up with a total that the student owes. From there, we want to put some rules in place. And rules are where potentially some of the biggest value of the form builder come into play. Rules allow us to determine what things are going to occur when a user either reaches the end of a form and or submits a form. So here you can see we have several rules that are all firing when the user submits the form. The first one being that we're going to show the user their information on the completion page. We're going to generate a PDF of the request form. And then we're going to send an email confirmation to the person that submitted this. Now, we've already set up the templates that control these rules. But here you're seeing us apply the rules using those templates. And then lastly, as I'd mentioned before, before anybody can access this form, you have to make the form live. So here under the publishing tab is where that feature lies. I want to, at the very least, make the form live so that I can then click here and view that form live. So if we put some basic information here, fill in the form, answer some questions, have you graduated yet? and then hit next. I'm gonna take three official copies and two unofficial copies. And lastly, we'll go ahead and submit our form. Now, on the confirmation page, you can see the total that we owe for the amount that we requested. And if we just open up our email inbox, you can also see that just a second ago, we've received a brand new email that says, your transcript request form receipt in the subject line. Dear Sally Young, this email will serve as your request please submit a payment in the amount of $19 to this address. And the attachment is the generated PDF that we've created. That's it. Six simple steps to building forms inside of Jadu's form builder. Thanks.